everyone, it's me, and today, let's watch Rick and Morty together! <laughs> about Rick and Morty theories can get really daunting. Like, remember the episode with the brain parasites that you could only identify if you couldn't think of any bad memories of them? Well, I don't have any bad memories of Rick and Morty, so does that mean the show is a parasite? <gasps> oh boy, it's getting weird! Oh boy, it's getting weird! <laughs> Internet, welcome to Film Theory. Hello, Internet, welcome to Film Theory. Hi, hello, Internet, welcome to Film Theory. The squanchiest show in all of Squanch. Your language <laughs> has the word squanch in it a lot. So, with the new season. Squanch! Of Rick and Morty starting July 30th, I've been digging through everything I can find about the series, and uh, my mind is going to some really weird places. Like, you know how Rick created a microverse where the inhabitants had to perform the same repetitive task over and over again to generate the electricity that Rick's spaceship runs on? Well, what if our world was created simply to power another, more intelligent civilization? <gasps> You're trying to say, Eternals! Hmm. <laughs> you know right, internal celestials. I mean you Marvels, MCU, I'm Laugh, sorry. but consider this. In the show, they had to step on Google boxes. In real life, what repetitive task came out of nowhere and now has everyone mesmerized? Fidget spinners! <laughs> but that's crazy, right? It's not like we have any evidence that fidget spinners exist in Rick and Morty's universe, let alone that they were invented by Rick, except, I mean, what's that on the jacket of literally every Rick on the Council of Ricks? Come on, it's coincidence. <laughs> Not but hey, person. that's just first person shooter, third person shooter, third person. What's the theory? A film theory. And fade back up because the episode isn't over yet. Putting. Oh, che! I thought it's gonna be like. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you do like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have any questions. Don't forget to follow my channel. I sincerely appreciate all of your support. But hey, that's just a theory, a film theory. Thanks for watching. Okay, joking, 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 please don't kill away, please don't kill away, please don't kill away, okay? Side conspiracy theories about whether our fidget spinner crazed society is just a teeny verse powering a mini verse created by Rick. Today, I want to look ahead to the future of Rick and Morty to theorize future. about one of the show's most fascinating and threatening characters, I Patch Morty, otherwise I known Patch. as Evil Morty. If you need a refresher course, Evil Morty's only appearance is in the season one episode Close Rick Counters of the Rick Kind, wherein he and an evil Evil Rick assassinate a number of other Ricks across multiple dimensions and then try to frame the show's main Rick, Rick C-137, for the crime. Well, you must understand that this video came out uh, nearly five years ago, so um, please be understanding if his theory might not be correct. Anyways, let's move on. Oh yeah, by the way, fair warning, don't. And I repeat, do not play a drinking game where every time I say either Rick or Morty during this episode you take a drink. I guarantee you'll be dead by minute five. Anyway, by the end of the episode, Evil Rick is killed and Evil Morty sneaks away uncaptured, blending into a sea of freed Mortys. But here's where it really gets interesting. It's revealed at the end of the episode that Evil Rick was oh. just a robot, and that it was Evil Morty who was controlling him via a control in his eye patch the whole time. Wow. Clearly that is a huge cliffhanger to end on, and based on what the creators are saying, Evil Morty probably won't be hiding out for very much longer. They've definitely been a little cagey, but just listen to how the creators of the series talk about this character. We probably talked about Evil Morty in that writer's room more than we actually spent working on episodes that aired. When we want to come back to something really cool like, like Evil Morty, I want to make sure I know What's his motivation? What's his backstory? What's going on? And it has to be inspired. So it's not a question of if Evil Morty comes back, it's when. As for his motivations, well, what if I told you that Evil Morty was Rick's previous Morty? You heard oh. that right. The Rickest of all Ricks, Sejuan Love and Rick Sanchez main title character Rick. That Morty with an eye patch is his original Morty. Huh, that's interesting. Anyways. And that evil Morty's revenge on Rick is likely to be a major factor in upcoming episodes. Oh boy, here I go a theorizing again. Just call me <laughs> Crumbopulous Matt Pat. 
Oh, bye! Now, before you swiftiest Rick and Morty fans get all bent out of shape and fold yourselves in half 12 times, I will say that I'm not the first person to think that Evil Morty used to be paired up with Rick C-137. But while I've seen the theory, I haven't really seen much evidence for it. That makes it much more of a hypothesis than a theory, really. By the same token, at this point, enough has been said on the internet about Rick and Morty that I can't be sure that any theory about the show hasn't been thought up before. I mean, there are some people online who believe that Morty's grandmother is Miss Frizzle from the Magic School Bus because, uh, <laughs> because Summer has red hair and Miss Frizzle also has red hair and likes science. And heck, even Arnold got the unique experience of shoving Magic School Buses way up his butt. <laughs> Okay, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Anyway, TLDR, even if you think you've heard a theory like this before, you'll want to stick around because this is the theoriest of theories when it comes to tracking the true story behind Evil Morty. And that's the way the news goes. Let's go! Now, you might say off the bat that there's no way Evil Morty could be Rick C-137's Morty because our Rick already has himself a Morty. And you're right, except for one thing. We can prove that our current Morty in the show isn't Rick's original. In close Rick counters, when Evil Rick is going through Rick C-137's memories, we get a flashback to Rick picking up Morty as a baby, which causes him to well up with tears. Not only is it a really touching moment, it's also crucial for piecing together Rick's backstory. Based on Jerry, crashing into Morty's room and something Ricked this way comes. And also, knock next time, you know? I mean, I'm sitting in here, I'm 14. I got a computer in here, you know? Oh. We know Morty is oh. 14 years mm -hmm. old. And based on official descriptions of the series on places like Google Play and Facebook, we see that Rick has been, quote, missing for nearly 20 years before arriving at his daughter's doorstep looking to move in, end quote. This fact is also oh, confirmed in the show when Beth says that she, I used to have to draw into family photos with a crayon. Thus, the current Morty cannot be Rick's original Morty. Rick's been gone for over 20 years, but Morty's only 14, meaning that Rick wouldn't have been around when Morty was a baby. Now, obviously, none of that math proves that evil Morty is the Morty that we see in that memory, but there are some other clues sprinkled throughout the episode that strongly suggest a connection. Let's listen to a bit of what evil Rick has to say about Rick's relationship with Morty. We both know that if there's any truth in the universe, it's that Ricks don't care about Mortys. Now, while it might initially seem irrelevant, remember that everything evil Rick says in the episode is coming from Evil Morty, since huh. Rick is just a robot controlled by the eye patch. With that new understanding, it's obvious that these are words coming from a Morty who is fed up with Rick, one who resents Rick for the mistreatment he's undergone. Resentment that probably comes from being experimented on, tortured, maybe even abandoned. And let's break those down one at a time. Evil Morty is obviously cybernetically enhanced, since we see at the end of the episode that his eye patch connects to some wires behind his eye. And we have proof that Rick C-137 isn't shy about mechanizing his Mortys. In the season 2 episode, The Ricks Must Be Crazy, Rick lets us onto a little secret about an enhancement that he gave to Morty. A long time ago, I implanted you with a subdermal chip that could call upon dormant nanobots in your bloodstream to restructure your anatomy and turn you into a car. Oh my god! And at the end of what the... the episode, we get proof that he's not bluffing. What the... We also... Okay, that was a very awkward long pause and poor kid in front of him. Literally didn't see it coming, literally. So know that evil Morty is aware of how Ricks camouflage their brainwaves by hanging out with Morty. See, when, when, when a Rick is with a Morty, the genius waves get cancelled out by the, uh... <clears throat> Morty waves. How can we be sure that Evil Morty knows this? Because Evil Morty sets up a matrix of kidnapped and tortured Mortys for his fake Rick, all to make it seem like the robot Rick under his control was a true Rick committing these crimes. And of course, Rick C-137 was surprisingly familiar with this concept. You get a whole matrix of Mortys and put them in agonizing pain. That creates a pattern that can hide even from other Ricks. I fiddled with the concept like this once. On paper, Morty, on paper. He concludes with the oddly specific detail that, I mean, you could accomplish the same result with like five Mortys and a jumper cable. What? Which I also wouldn't do. Sure you wouldn't, Rick. So sure. to say, but take another look at the visuals we get of Rick C-137's memories, and we get ourselves a remarkably quick peek at a Morty with wires hooked up to his hand, getting delivered an electric shock. We know that he didn't perform this experiment on our Morty. Our Morty certainly would have remembered it, meaning that the most likely test subject of that experiment is Rick's first Morty, Evil. Morty. After all, how would he have known that putting Mortys in pain would cancel
camouflage his brainwaves if he hadn't heard it from a Rick. The cherry on top of all of this is that it sounds an awful lot like Rick has had experience with an overconfident, smart Morty before, who then went on to betray him. At the end of the episode, when Morty's looking for some gratitude from Rick for saving his life, Rick is fast to shut him down by saying, A cocky Morty can lead to some big problems. Okay, so how did you know that? How? Can be a real bad thing for everybody. Then deflecting any further commentary by telling Morty he'd explain it to him when he's older. Again, an oddly specific detail for Rick to just toss out there, which makes it seem like he's hinting at the fate of his first Morty. Put all of these things together and what do we have? A Rick who had a Morty on which he did experiments, including cybernetic enhancements and brainwave masking tests. And an evil Morty with no Rick of his own who has cybernetic enhancements, knowledge of the Rick brainwave cloaking, and an intense hatred for all of Rick kind. Seems like a match made in heaven. There is no God Summer. You gotta rip that band-aid off now, you'll thank me later. But here's the kicker. In close Rick counters, Rick C-137's portal gun shows that he's been to all the dimensions where evil Morty has killed a Rick. He claims he was being framed and that his portal gun was tampered with remotely. Either way, it proves he has a relationship with evil Morty. If he actually uh -huh. was going to the crime scenes, it means he's been following the comings and goings of evil Morty for a while now. If his portal gun was tampered with by evil Morty, why? Why would Why? Evil Morty kill all the other Ricks, but then spare Rick C-137? Why would his goal be to frame that one particular Rick? Because Evil Morty, the original Morty, knows that the- Why do you have to punish this particular one? Biggest humiliation for the Rickest of all Ricks would be for Rick to be punished by himself. The Council of Ricks. Ricks he uh -huh. considers to be lesser versions of himself. It's the ultimate revenge for a Morty with an axe to grind. I'm the Rick, okay. and so were the rest of you before you formed this stupid alliance. You wanted to be safe from the government, so you became a stupid government. That makes every Rick here less Rick than me. If you like that, my- Less Rick than me. Oh, wow. My goodness, there's some ego, some big ego. Mind-blowing revelation? Well then make sure you hammer Morty that subscribe button. Subscribe! If you don't subscribe to the film theorists within the next 30 seconds, then I guarantee that this timeline is gonna divide thanks to your uncertainty. <laughs> you only have yourselves to thank. So what happened? Maybe Rick was trying to create a super Morty. One just as smart or smarter super. than himself to help him take down the Galactic Federation without the Council of Ricks getting in the way. He enhances Maybe. this Morty mentally and robotically, but then bails when he senses that Morty is getting too strong or too cruel or too independent. He finds the mortiest Morty he can to disguise his brainwaves and starts over in a new dimension, C-137, that hasn't had a Rick in decades so he can start again from scratch. Aww. This of course begs the question, will evil Morty get his revenge? He didn't do it! Oh, there you go, there's the timeline splitting. He did subscribe. subscribe. Did you? Thanks, Thanks a lot, guys. guys. Now we have to deal with two, two uncertain, uncertain timelines. timelines. I mean, unless, unless you subscribe, you subscribe which, which is probably, probably gonna be a good idea, idea anyway, because with season 3 of Rick and Morty coming, there's gonna be a lot more things in your way. Uh, Oh my gosh, do you hear that? Oh, wow, the ending is awesome. You got a left and a right, right and a left. So, did you subscribe? Did you subscribe? Well, anyways, hope that you enjoyed. Oh my gosh, thank you, it was getting awkward in here. I'm glad that I was able to cure your uncertainty. Now, we can continue with the episode. No more uncertain timeline splits. Will Evil Morty get his revenge? There are already some clues that point to yes, but this time yes. the revenge isn't gonna come directly from Evil Morty. Plot twist, it's gonna come from our Morty. <laughs> because Evil Morty's plot all along wasn't necessarily to kill all the Ricks himself, there's mm -hmm. no way he ever could. Nope, it was to turn all the Mortys against all the Ricks. I mean, think about it. Why would Evil Morty use a robot Rick in the first place if his only goal is to assassinate Ricks? Nothing about his plot to assassinate Ricks required anything nearly as elaborate as an eye patch controlled automaton. He could have just gone from dimension to dimension using the element of surprise to kill Ricks and still hack Rick C-137's portal gun to frame him for the murders. It's not like any of the killings were caught on tape. No, by creating a fake Rick that he used to kidnap and torture those Mortys, Evil Morty is able to indoctrinate an entire army to fight his cause for him. And again, what a dramatically perfect way to overthrow Rick, by getting his Morty to turn on him. Evil Morty <gasps> further fans those flames when the Mortys break out and attack Robot Rick. Oh my gosh. Pouring oil onto the fire. Huh. You little bastards, kill me. Do it. Do it.
Remember, those words have to be coming directly from Evil Morty. Sounds an awful lot like he's encouraging Morty aggression toward Ricks. Looks like he stole a trick or two from Emperor Palpatine. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> but would other non-Evil Mortys really turn on their Ricks in these ways? They already have. In the Rick and Morty comics, yes, there really are comics of Rick and Morty. So if you still need more of a fix, inject those puppies into your eye holes. Just mm -hmm. watch out for the eye hole man. Issues number 7, <laughs> 9, and 10 feature a story arc in which Morty is transported to a world without Ricks. And seeing the differences between this world and the world his previous Rick had destroyed, this Morty vowed to rid the multiverse of all Ricks. You see that resentment bleed over into the main Morty in the comics, which I should mention is Morty from Dimension C-132, a similar dimension to C-137, but still one distinct from it, as he sees that in a world without Rick, he becomes intelligent and powerful. Concluding that Rick is actually holding him back from reaching his full potential. And as for oh. our Morty, Earth Morty, we're seeing the same thing start to boil over in the show. Let's revisit that scene when Evil Rick, saying Evil Morty's words, confronts Rick C-137 with how to treat Mortys. Oh, to, to be honest, right, that particular scene is very unexpected because he actually shows human emotion. He cried. We both know that if there's any truth in the universe, it's that Ricks don't care about Mortys. Now compare that with the words delivered by our Morty in the season 3 premiere when he's spitting some hard truths to Summer about Rick. He bailed on Mom when she was a kid. He, he bailed on Tiny Planet. And in case I never made this clear to you, Summer, he bailed on you. He left you to rot in a world that he ruined because he doesn't care because nobody's special to him, Summer. Sound familiar? And if you think that's all talk, don't forget that if Rick had given Morty a real gun near the end of that episode, Morty <laughs> would have shot Rick right in the head. Because at this point, Morty has no illusions. When Morty's back is up against the wall, he's decided that he's gonna choose himself and his family first over Rick. Whether we get evil Morty back or not, his influence will be there in Earth Morty, just waiting to rear its ugly head. Who knows, maybe Earth Morty will one day reveal himself to be the real identity of evil Morty. But that's just speculation. In the meantime, I'll just let Rick himself foreshadow it. Oh, it gets darker, Morty. Well Welcome to the darkest year of our adventures. But hey, hold on a minute. Fast person shooter, that person shooter, brand person shooter. I think most of us watching this channel can agree that Rick and Morty being back is like the best thing to happen to TV since like the last season of Rick and Morty. Seriously, when the audience of this <laughs> channel gets more excited about Rick and Morty than it does for Game of Squanching Thrones, you know you got yourself a dedicated audience. The only problem with that, though, is that Rick and Morty is still just a half-hour TV show, leaving you with 167 hours and 30 minutes of your week to... do what? Dream of parallel universes where every waking moment is full of smart, funny, thought-provoking, well-written animated series? Wow, he's actually doing anime! Ha, huh, awesome. I mean, um, it's not quite his forte, but it's just awesome. Like, thank you so much. Anyways, have you subscribed? Well, before you start engaging with that oddly specific daydream, my friend, I have <laughs> found that dimension for <laughs> you. Specific. It's called the Crunchyroll Dimension. <laughs> if you like Rick and Morty, then make sure that you check out one of their newest shows, <laughs> Restaurant <laughs> to Another World. I had never seen or heard about this thing until watching it on Crunchyroll, but basically, instead of going to new dimensions using a portal gun, in Restaurant to Another World, you go to new dimensions using a grungy restaurant. That's no joke. They actually go through a grungy restaurant where the universe's weirdest monsters hang out. It's like Rick's portal gun met with the Star Wars cantina. But then there's also dragons. And her. Yeah. Restaurant to another world. You're going to want to check that one out. And not only check it out, but check it out in style. Click the link in the description to get Crunchyroll Premium for free for 14 days. Or just use the special link they've given exclusively to us theorists, crunchyroll.com slash matpat. M-A-T-P-A-T. -A -T. No more pulling anime episodes with incomprehensible dubbing off the dark corners of the interwebs. Crunchyroll has episodes one hour after they air in Japan in super high quality on practically any device given to us by the gracious general generosity of the big giant heads in the sky. And most importantly of all, no more wondering what to watch next when the credits roll after a Rick and Morty episode because Crunchyroll not only has the new stuff, but also must-see anime classics like Cowboy Bebop. 
beautifully written, beautifully animated. If you haven't seen Cowboy Bebop and are even remotely interested in anime as an art form, it is culturally imperative that you watch that series now. Even if you don't like anime, it's an incredibly compelling story that you're gonna want to watch from beginning to end. The bottom line is there's tons of content to cover the time after Rick and Morty ends, and the day after, and the week after, and the months when they decide to take a random mid-season break. What even is that, by the way? Why do you need so many breaks? You don't see film theory stopping for a mid-season break. Oh, YouTube, you're unforgiving! Get the description and fill the void in your entertainment calendar. Crunchyroll.com slash M-A-T-P-A-T. Crunchyroll.com slash MatPat. 14 days of premium for free. And hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And wubba lubba dub dub. I am in constant pain because we don't get mid-season breaks. Suck it up, TV people. Why do you guys get paid all the bucks? Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you find this video very interesting and just sort of very unique to watch. If you do like this video, please remember to like, share and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have a connection with us. Don't forget to follow my channel and I sincerely appreciate all of your support and encouragement for my work. Very motivating and uplifting. Thank you so much for your positivity and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you so much. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. Thanks for watching. Thank you. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.